Starship crushed its objectives last week. We'll discuss what happened and where the program currently stands. Multiple Dragons are now docked to the space station. There's only one remaining Falcon 9 launch for the year 2020. Starlink gets some major fundage, and Virgin Galactic is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last week, the lawyer Y took me on vacay, so let's start out by doing a little debrief of everything that went down, well, up and then down since our last video. Of course, as you're all well aware by now, Starship Serial Number 8 finally ascended 12 and a half clicks on Wednesday the 9th, slowly lifting off its launch mount like a hefty can of Campbell's soup without the noodles. The Starship was far from fully loaded, but she was going slow or she would have gone crazy high and far with three engines. Those Raptors were operating well below max thrust, and as they were reared back to the minimum throttle point, they shut off. Otherwise, the ship would have blown through the altitude limit. Once at Apogee, the third Raptor engine, 42, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, flamed out and Starship flipped over to begin the ultimate belly flop, using its four actuating fins to keep itself stabilized. Blowing up! He's coming down! <laughs> And I gotta say, for a first timer, SN8 is a prodigy. Skydiving is hard. Falling through the atmosphere is more uncomfortable than you'd think. It's cold, loud, and turbulent up there. But it was smooth sailing for the noob. I saw zero potato chipping. Mmm, chips. Mmm, sacrilegious. As the prototype Mars vehicle fell closer to the pad, two of the engines ignited and the aft flaps folded up to get both ends pointing in the right direction for touchdown. However, one of the Raptors developed a severe case of IBSD, causing Starship to smack down on target and explode. <laughs> if you think this disappointed Elon and his SpaceX team, you'd be wrong. Mars, here we come. Thank you, South Texas, for your support. This is the gateway to Mars. This was the first test flight of a fully stacked Starship, taking it more than a handful of miles up and letting it steer itself down. And in case you didn't know, rockets don't typically go skydiving. There were so many unknowns going into this operation, Elon previously said he'd just be happy if it survives long enough to freefall and use its flaps. But it went even further than that, surviving until the final seconds of the mission timeline. Because of this, they were able to obtain tons of data regarding the ascent, flap control, the switchover from drawing fuel from the main tanks to the header tanks, and the landing sequence itself. By the end of the evening, we were already informed by Elon what caused the crash. Fuel header tank pressure was low during the landing burn, causing touchdown velocity to be high and therefore the rocket rapidly disassembled itself. But we got all the data we need. Congratulations SpaceX team, HE double L hockey sticks, hell yeah. So in other words, the pressure in the methane header tank used during the final burn was too weak, which means not enough methane made it to the engines. This caused the oxygen methane ratio to skew in favor of the oxygen, acting like a catalyst that heated the engines up so much that it started melting and spewing out its copper innards which was the green flames you saw shooting out, like a lightsaber gone rogue. Here's an image provided by RGV Aerial Photography showing what was left of SN8 after the rud. But don't look at it, mature audiences only. Steve Jurvetson accompanied Elon on his field trip to the scene of the crime, along with Gwen Shotwell, where it was decided that SN8's head should be preserved on a pike as a warning to other starships that dareth come onto the land. This made S9 faint in fear, collapsing into the high bay walls and damaging its fins. But not to worry, the situation was rectified. Those fins acted like a crumple zone, so the ship may still be salvageable. But whether or not SpaceX just moves on to SN10 as their next victim depends on any remaining excuses SN9 may have to sit this one out. Uh, my apartment's on fire. Flooded. Prior to SN9 becoming a dysfunctional weeble wobble, SpaceX was in talks with Cameron County to transport the Starship to the test stand on Monday. Obviously, that didn't happen, but we do have multiple road closures now in effect for today through the end of the month. But don't get too excited, though. Most likely, these are for transporting cranes and Starship from and to the launch site. All right, let's move on to some Dragon news. If you remember back to December 6th, the first Cargo Dragon 2 capsule left Pad 39A for the 21st resupply mission of the space station. Well, the next day, it rendezvoused and docked autonomously, and for the first time ever, two dragons are now at the nest at the same time. And we have confirmed contact and capture 12.40 p.m. Central Time. Station Houston, dragon contact and soft capture complete. The next dragon mission will be Crew 2, slated for March of next year, and NASA just announced three of the four-man team for Crew 3, slated for October. From left to right, it will be the first mission for American astronaut Rajat Chari and ESA astronaut Mattis Maurer, and third mission for Commander Tom Marshburn. We do have a Falcon 9 mission to debrief this week. 
On Sunday, SpaceX launched and successfully placed a Sirius XM satellite in orbit from Cape Canaveral, Florida. This was the second time a booster flew for a record-setting seventh time, and first time such a heavily used booster flew for a real customer and not for a Starlink mission. And it will get a shot at flight number eight sometime in the future since it successfully landed on a drone ship. Yesterday, the super-secret Enroll 108 mission was scheduled to launch, but the rocket scrubbed at less than two minutes remaining in the countdown due to a slightly higher than nominal pressure in the upper stage LOX tank. SpaceX will try again tomorrow, Saturday, December 19th, and I'll be live for it for those of you in need of a viewing buddy. And to round out our SpaceX news for the week before we move on to our final segment, SpaceX won almost $1 billion of the $9 billion up for grabs from the FCC for their Rural Digital Opportunity Fund Phase 1 auction. They were one of the largest recipients of the 180 winners who contended for the internet service rights to rural areas. Over the next 10 years, SpaceX will receive this grant money to bring their Starlink services to places like the Miami International Airport, the Pentagon parking lot, and many other places scattered throughout the United States. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Saturday morning, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 vehicle took off from their New Mexico spaceport America beneath the wings of its mothership that took it to an altitude of 50,000 feet or 15 clicks before dropping it like an air-to-air -air missile. The plan was for the ship to then light its rocket engine and ascend on a suborbital trajectory, but a faulty computer connection triggered an abort to halt ignition, so pilot struck out and McKay glided her down for a safe landing. The vehicle is designed to take eight people to space for a joyride, and it's just a couple test flights away from flying commercial passengers. Already 600 people have booked their tickets at 250,000 coin apiece. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to my eccentric members and patrons for their support. You too can support us by joining the family using the links in the description below. Have a normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>